Hey guys, welcome back to All House Plants. My name is Stephanie. Today I have a special video for you about aguanema or Chinese evergreens and how to take care of them. Chinese evergreens are without a doubt my favorite house plant. And in my opinion, they are the ideal house plant. I find them to be not fussy, easy to care for, tolerant of over and under watering, tolerant of different light levels, tolerant of low humidity and temperature changes. In my opinion, they are the best house plant. Now, I have plenty of other plants. I have ficus trees, Schiffelera trees, uh, cast iron plants, philodendrons, a bunch of different palms, dracaenas, peace lilies I'm also a fan of, um, epiphytic cacti, cacti or um, like Christmas cactus um, and the like, but aguanemas are by far my favorite. And we will talk about all the care that they require. Um, and I'll also show you some of my collection. I'm gonna do a little bit of a different video today. Um, so let me know if you like the new format. I am tired of sitting here in the camera and having you guys look at me the whole time. I think you'd rather see the plants. So this is gonna be a little bit of a different format video. Um, let me know if you like it. All right, guys, let's get started. Now, aguanema, or Chinese evergreens, are members of the Araceae family, which includes anthuriums, peace lilies, philodendrons, monstera, all plants like that. They are native to subtropical and tropical Asia and New Guinea, and they occur in the understory of the rainforests. So I'd like you to just imagine these guys growing in the dark forest floor amongst the shrubs and, you know, the little bushes and stuff in the rainforest and the vines and all that. And this native environment will clue you into what type of houseplant they are. They are a low light houseplant. Now with that being said, you can see from just this little swath of plants here, these are all aglaonema, there are many different varieties that occur uh, apart from the natural form. Even though aglaonemas are low light house plants, they do not all require low light. Now something like this aglaonema chocolate down here, a very dark green house plant, a pattern, a nice subtle pattern with a little bit of pink. This is going to be a low light plant because, like I've said in previous videos, the more chlorophyll in a plant, the more green it is, the better it can process light and turn light into food. Unlike a plant like this mystery aglaonema here from Lowe's, there is a lot of white on this plant. This plant will not do well in low light. This would be a medium light plant. So bright indirect light or a little bit of um, direct sun for a small portion of the day. Same thing with this peach cochin. Look at all that pink. Pink does not make food, only green does. Therefore, this would be a higher light plant. Okay, so does that make sense, you guys, for light requirements? The more colors, other than green, that the plant is, the higher light it's gonna need. This Jubilee is a low light because of the dark greens. And this frosted ghost would be well, probably medium, possibly low, but I would do medium if it was me. As far as watering is concerned, 
Aglaonemas are very tolerant of over and under watering. They want to be kept evenly moist, like most house plants. After all, they are native to the rainforest. So watering maybe once a week, okay? I would say when the top one to two inches dries out, give them a little more water. But they should not be kept as moist as a fern, nor dry out completely like a cactus. Now, one of the things I love about aglaonemas is that if they do dry out completely, they don't wilt or start to turn colors too bad, you do have time to save them and get to them, but they do want to be kept evenly moist. The type of soil I use for aglaonema is just regular potting mix. Do stay away from anything with moisture control. That does hold on to too much water. But if you buy just a straight run-of-the-mill potting mix with coca coir, perlite, you can add a little bit of bark if you want to. But just a straight, regular old potting mix, they do absolutely fine. Aglaonemas are not terribly heavy feeders, but you do need to fertilize them. I fertilize mine every couple of weeks during the growing season. And I use liquid fertilizer. I use Espoma indoor houseplant fertilizer, and they seem to do well with this. I also use fish tank water, and that is full of nitrates and fish waste, and that's good for them as well. Now, another thing I love about aglaonemas is that they tolerate regular old indoor humidity. They don't need high humidity. They can tolerate low humidity. And they don't whine or cry or carry on about it. So just a regular old indoor humidity. And I believe right now the humidity in my house, uh, remember this is Northern Ohio and it is winter time. We are heading into February this week. The humidity in my house is anywhere from 30, well, like 40%. And some of my ficus are not doing well. Some of my anthuriums are sad, but not my aglaonemas. Aglaonemas are perfect. Pests. Aglaonemas are relatively pest free. I am having a really hard time right now in the middle of winter as I typically do with spider mites. And for some reason I have a bunch of scale as well. Not really sure where that came from, but I've got a whole pile of plants on the other side of the room that are absolutely being overtaken by spider mites. A battle I have to admit at the moment I'm not sure if I'm winning but the aglaonemas have no spider mites. They are looking great. The only thing they can get that I have seen, sometimes they will get a little bit of black mold on the undersides of the leaves because aglaonemas transpire a lot, uh, which means to uh, their pores open and sometimes they can drip water from the leaves and sometimes mold will grow on the other side. But all you have to do to fix that is wipe it down with uh, soapy water. So that is a very easy fix. Propagation. Aglaonemas are most easily propagated from uh, stem cuttings. Now they're very slow growing, so you do have to be patient. Uh, I propagated this little guy is a propagation of mine that I cut from a much larger mother plant. And I probably rooted these two stem cuttings right here, one, two. These two stem cuttings in water, probably a month. And then I stuck them in a moist soil in a pot. 
and this plant has been growing in a pot for a couple of years and is now you know has a pretty good sized root ball so aglaonema are slow growing so just keep in mind when you're propagating that they need time Another way that you can propagate aglaonema is by digging the baby pups out. We'll see if we can show you some. I'll look in this Silverado here. This is a big plant. So this is aglaonema Silverado. If I wanted to propagate, say I wanted to take this little guy here. This is a plantlet. I could come around to the bottom here and just break him off. And this guy too, this is another plantlet. So don't break it off, you know, here. You obviously have to dig down into the soil, um, dig away, make sure you get some roots with it. But you can propagate by taking off little plantlets from the main stems. And you can see the mother stem of this plant is actually uh, very large. And then she's got all these little babies growing around her down here on the bottom. Another thing you can do is if, you know, say this very large aglaonema is getting too big for you. You can cut all these little plantlets off, trash the mother plant, put all the plantlets in a smaller pot, and now you have a smaller, more manageable plant without truly getting rid of the big one. So as I said, aglaonemas are slow growing. Do keep that in mind when you are shopping for aglaonemas, they do tend to be a little more expensive um, than perhaps the average house plant. Most four to six inch pots are 20 to $25 where I'm from. But again, that's because they're slow growing. So they take time to raise, they're gonna be more expensive. But I would argue The color is second to none. And this is the mother plant, the Aglaonema Jubilee, that the little cutting I showed you earlier is from. So in summary, you guys, Aglaonemas are low light house plants. Keep in mind that the more, var uh, not variegation, but the lighter colored markings they have. So pink, white, red, pale green, even probably this guy. The lighter colored leaves they have, the more light they need. So this guy right here would be maybe a medium light plant. The Silverado would possibly be a medium light plant. This Golden Madonna is absolutely a medium light plant. Or bright indirect light, as is something like this, this frosted ghost, sparkling Sarah, and these two on the end here are absolutely medium light plants. This Jubilee is a low light plant because of the darker colored leaves. So is this chocolate. So is this, um, I'm not sure what this variety is. It's some kind of take on a silver bay or a stripes, but this could be a lower light. And I think even this Indo Princess is okay in lower light. They're very tolerant on their watering. They just want to be kept evenly moist. Evenly moist for me means watering about once a week and 
allowing the top one to two inches of the soil to dry out between waterings. Aglaonemas are pretty much pest free. They are not susceptible to spider mites at all, nor are they really susceptible to other bugs. You know, I mean, of course they can get them, but very rarely do I find things on my aglaonemas. They are slow growing, so they need time uh, when you're propagating, but they're not fussy when it comes to humidity and they're not fussy um, just in general. So that is aglaonemas, you guys. My entire aglaonema collection, a sampling of every kind I own. Let me know if you like this new type of video and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, thanks for watching. Good luck with your aglaonemas and we'll see you next time, bye.